Watching me for the first time, I go by the name of the Gift Soma Gwabe, also known as Soma K, your Young Internal Auditor of the Year. Before I get into today's topic, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Welcome back. So, as promised, I said that I will be doing psychometric tests part two. And if you remember, Part one was basically me explaining what is a psychometric test, why is it done, and what kind of tests can you expect, and the difficulty of the test. So today I created a document basically that summarizes the key points that you guys should take note of before you actually attempt your psychometric test. So if you did not watch the previous video, please go and watch it so that you can have an understanding of what exactly is happening in this video. All right, so let's get on to it. So basically how to prepare for the psychometric test. So the first thing is take notes from the invitation received by the employer. So basically all you need to do is open your email inbox, analyze the email that was sent to you and potentially assess what you can expect. You might find that the email has a bit of, you know, an idea that will tell you that, OK, you can expect numerical, you can expect a verbal. Um, I did explain this in the previous video. And also another point is ensure that you don't miss the deadline, guys, and communicate with the employer if you cannot complete it by the stipulated date. So if something happens, you know, life happens, but do notify them in advance so that maybe they could um, change the date for you in order to complete the psychometric test but missing a psychometric test because you forgot is just not on so please make sure that you put a reminder and you are aware of the date that you need to write and then the next point is the publisher that is used by the employer so basically here yeah, it is an outsourced service as i said and um what you should do is analyze the links of the company to get an idea of which source is it so that you can do some research? So you might pick up that um, psychometric test that you're doing. It could be from SHL, it could be Talent Q, it could be Cubix or Conexa. And once you have those names, you could just do a little bit of research so you know what to expect. And then the next thing is please practice before attempting the real test. And basically you watching this video is you preparing yourself before attempting the real test. I have attached a link in this document and I will attach it in the car in the bio below so that you can just have an idea of what to expect and I will take you through an example in this video as well. So practicing before attempting the real test will help you become familiar with the way you'll be tested. And another thing is I did mention that you could be asked questions relating to your personality or your opinion, basically what you think about certain things. So you cannot work on your personality, guys. You are who you are, so do not stress about preparing for that. Just make sure that you answer to the best of your ability. And then the last point would be improving accuracy, technique and methods to rule out answers. So your main focus is just to be familiar with the test and then being able to have a, an exam technique or method that you want to use in order for you to get through all the questions. And then the next point is <laughs> planning for the day of the test. Um, so yeah, load shedding guys, that is our reality. I put a picture there to just show that this is the country we're living in. And if your battery dies in between the test or something and you didn't prepare yourself, it's really going to stress you out. So make sure you plan that um, around your load shedding schedule. Ask yourself if you'll do it in the morning or the evening. What do you prefer? Would you do it after a meal or workplace? I know if you do it after a meal, you might feel sleepy, you won't focus. Um, some people are night owls, some people are early birds, so it depends. Are you going to switch off your phone or go in airplane mode? Um, you know, 
maybe you don't want to be disturbed. And then the last point is being familiar with your computer. Um, make sure you have a calculator, pens and rough paper. So the calculator, guys, it's mainly for your numerical test and it needs to be a calculator you're familiar with, guys, so that you don't confuse yourself. Very important here. Um, most of us use the Casio calculator. I think we're quite aware and familiar with it. Make sure that it's charged, you know, if you have to charge. I don't know if you charge calculators, but yeah, it shouldn't just randomly switch off on you and stuff. So prepare, prepare, prepare. And then the next point would be reading the questions carefully and understanding the question. There's a huge difference between these two. So when you read the question, you're just reading it without panicking, you trying to get it into your head. But then when you understand the question, it means now you sort of see what they're trying to ask you and you can already come up with an answer. So please make sure that you these two go hand in hand. And then the next point is you do not have to double check your answers, guys. There is no time to be double checking answers. This is not um, a, a do or death, whatever type of exam where you need to get 80% to pass the semester. No, but um, just have a good balance. Be able to quickly reflect on your answer before moving on while you're actually answering. So just be that flexible and quick, you know. Um, and then the next point would be your test score. So speed versus accuracy. Guys, it's not just about the score, but you can finish very early. Be so fast and get everything wrong. Your accuracy would just not be impressive for the employer. So make sure that you have a good balance, you know, like this picture that I put here. Take your time. So goes to the next point. Take an educated guess. Eliminate what does not look right. So do a process of elimination. There are some answers that really look wrong and it's already a guidance for you to find the right answer. And then the last point, guys, is attempt the test alone. Please do not cheat. Trust in yourself that you can do this. I mean, you were already shortlisted to do an interview or to complete a test. So trust yourself to carry yourself through this test. Um, be ethical because remember, we're trying to hire you and as an employer, why would you wanna hire somebody that's already cheating before they even get the post? And then here is the link that I promised that you can use to go and do the test. So I'm just gonna go to the link here. It's already opened. And it looks something like this. So it says about 287 people have taken this test. So I'll just say start the test. And here it's being prepared. Um, so this is just, yeah, uh -huh. now I'm having flashbacks. So basically you'll be given the time limit, as I said, and it's quite long. So you can see the patterns here. It, it's all about how you guys understand it. So you'd look, maybe you're using this, using this, or you're using the color coding. So whatever, then maybe you'd feel like the right one is probably, I don't know, this one. Um, and then point number two, you'd look at, okay, for me, I'd be like, okay, these are colored. The star is here, one is facing, they're not colored. They're colored again, but this one's facing down, not colored facing right. So this is colored facing up. So I'd want to have a not colored facing this way. Uh, no, we already have that. Um, I'd want to have a non colored facing down because I've never seen. A, yeah, so I'll choose this one. Um, so this would be my option. And then a right. Oof, okay. <laughs> Triangle, circle up, uh, triangle, circle side, down, side. I have a circle up, I have, so you need to be really quick. I have a circle like this. So what is the pattern? I see two circles like this. I see two ups. I see two downs. I see two to the sides. I don't see two of the, no, I do see them. I don't know, guys, I'm just gonna take anything. But yeah, you're getting the flow, right? So you can also skip questions. And then here's like a numerical type of thing. So for me, um, this is four, eight. I'd say four times four is 16, eight. This is 32, uh, eight, eight, 16, 24. 
maybe, because here it's four, eight. Oh man, I don't know. But yeah, it's this is basically how you find yourself, you know, in the test. So maybe here um, your calculator would come hand in in hand here. So you could be like, okay, seventy three. 61, 70, what is the pattern? So for me, 70 minus 55, that would be um, 25 minus 25. Um, if I look here, 73, so the difference between 70 is seven, and then the difference from 61 to 73, nine plus three is 12, so seven, 12, I'm not sure, 81, 69. Guys, I don't know right now, like, yeah, I'm just playing around with this just to show you. But yeah, this is basically what you can expect. Um, I think with this one, uh, there's a difference of 10, then it's 15. There's a difference of 10 and then it's nine and then 10. So I would say, oh, shucks. Hmm. I would say so it's 10. 15. I have no idea. I'm just guessing. And then for me, one, two, three, four. So four times four is 16. Four times five star is 20. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times five is 30, but I don't see it here. So, okay, maybe a difference of maybe it's 24. I don't know. But yeah, guys, this is basically what you're going to be doing. Um, so yeah, I was just giving you an overview and I hope that this helped and all the best, guys. I hope you do get the employment and let me know if you have any questions. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.